Welcome to Direct Business with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to use append variable activity in Azure Data Factory. We are going to perform a real-time example in which what we will be doing, we will be emailing the list of the files which you have processed in Azure Data Factory. So we will concatenate all those lists of the files and then email. So there is tons of, ton of stuff that you will learn in this video. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here we have Azure portal and I have this resource group. I have a blob storage. So let me show you the blob storage first. Here I have a container and the container name is the input. I have multiple files sitting here. So now what we are going to do here, we are going to create a pipeline that can process these files. So you might want to just copy these files from one container to another container. You might want to be uh, reading these files and loading to the SQL table and all that. And after performing all those operations, you would like to send the list of these files in the email and tell uh, your uh, maybe team, hey, these files has been processed. So there could be a lot of other scenarios. Maybe you uh, the different files come in the folder and uh, what you would like to do, you will read the list of uh, those file names and send the email saying, hey, these are the files which have received and uh, would you like to process or we should run our process. So there are tons of scenario we can do uh, by using this type of uh, uh, activity or this type of uh, um, you know once uh, the, the, this type of uh, situation comes uh, through so what we are going to do here uh, we are going to go to the azure data factory and i'm going to create a new pipeline now, now in this pipeline now first of all uh, what i would like to do i would like to read uh, the list of all these files so what i'm going to do i'm going to use uh, the metadata activity so what that will do that will uh, get me the list of uh, those files so I'm going to go to the data set first. Let me say get a list of files. And then I'm going to go to data set here and I'm going to create a new linked service here. So go to the Azure Blob Storage and hit continue. Okay, CSV files or binary doesn't really matter in this case for me. And I'm going to create a new linked service and we will be providing our subscription and then we will be providing our uh, blob storage name so that's done and i'm going to call this one okay that's fine we can keep it as your blob story to create now next step is uh, which folder or container they are in the input yes so and uh, do i care about the uh, first row has header or not and all that no i don't care so i'm gonna be just leave this as it is hit ok and then i'm gonna go to the field list and here i'm gonna select the child items now what i'm gonna do next i'm going to bring the for each loop as i got the list of the files i have to process them now it is my choice what i would like to do maybe i would like to move them from one folder to another folder or would like to load them to the sql table or you know even create some other file format type files from these files so here i my i have my for each i'm gonna go to settings and go to items and add dynamic content and here I will select this uh, get list of files output. So that's uh, our activity. So metadata activity. And I'm going to type a child items. So this is going to get me all the list of those files. And inside the for each loop, uh, I'm going to click right here on the pencil icon. And now I can do multiple things. Let's say I can use copy activity. Okay. But uh, in my case, I'm not going to use copy activity. I'm gonna, just going to use wait activity. Let's say I just use wait, you know. But uh, uh, what wait will do is will do nothing. But inside that, you can use tons of activities here. But the activity we are going to talk about is the append variable. So I would like to, whenever the for each loop is going to loop through each file, I would like to save that file name in a variable. So we are going to go to the pipeline level again here we are going to create a variable so click right there go to the new and i'm going to call it the list of files okay so that's going to be array so no default value let's uh, bring it here go back here in the activity and uh, think about that uh, instead of wait you use copy activity or whatever and after that you have used append variable okay so append variable 
and now you connect that so you can use all those activities to perform any operation and then you are saving the file name into the variable so go to variable here select the name list of the files and we know that it is a array type variable now click on add dynamic contents and here we are selecting for each item and then we will say name so that's what we will do and it will save us the name so I hit uh, OK and now we are all good. I can go ahead and execute this. So what's going to happen is going to get the list of the files from here. Then for each loop, it's going to loop through those list of the files and each of uh, uh, execution or iteration is going to keep adding the file names to the variable. OK, let's go ahead and uh, execute and see what happened. So you can see right there, it uh, get, get the list of the files. So you have uh, all that uh, file name should be coming here. And uh, then uh, you can see this is file name. And then there is a file type or type of the blob what we have there. So these are the file names. All the file names are here. From this, uh, we went inside uh, the for each. And uh, if for each tells us there are five items. Now inside that, we have a wait activity. That's really, we are not doing anything with that but we have append variable so click right there so you see right there that's the first value then you have another value so you keep adding all those values here so at this point you are not seeing the output of that values so like list of them so let me do one thing out of the for each loop i'm going to bring a set variable so out of the uh, for each loop, uh, I'm going to bring the set variable. And what we are going to do, we are going to save our array type variable in our uh, another variable. Let's call it a string. OK, so I'm going to go to back to the right here. Click and go to variables. And uh, here I'm going to call str list of files. OK, so this is our string type uh, variable. So I'm going to connect my for each. And then I'm going to go to set variables and here go to variables and see list of the file. That's our array and this is our string. So I want to set the value for a string list of files. So it is asking what value you would like to save. So I'm going to go and click a list of files. That's my array type, right? So if I do that, what's going to happen? Now I want to execute and show you what will happen. And then we will take care of that. So in this scenario, you see that it failed because we are trying to save this list of files. This is our array, right? As you can see right there, this is an array. And we are trying to save this array in the uh, our variable that is a string typo. So that's where it failed. If, but we can save it if we want to. So how we can do that here? And uh, what I need to do, I need to go back to values. And if I would like to do, I can put the curly parentheses around it. So it will convert to the string. Now hit OK. And uh, it should be all good. But you have seen that uh, our uh, uh, array has a list of the files. Because when I saved it, it will show me the input. So now you can see right there. So see set variable, the input is provided something like this. So, so these are the list of the files provided to it. OK, now what I want to do, I got the list of the files and I would like to send these list of the files in the email. So this is still see this has the parentheses around it. So it means that this is an array of values. Even I have converted to string. So by converting to string, what happened? It added this backslash to it. OK, so that's fine. I don't care. So I need to send these a list of the files in the email. So for that, uh, there is no built-in function here in Azure Data Factory. I have to use the logic app. So let's go to the portal and take a look. Here in the portal, I'm going to create logic apps and add, select the resource group and select consumption. And here I will say TBIT. That's the name of my logic app. It's going to be East US. So now what we'll do, we'll hit create and hit create. While it creates, so let's talk about a few things about append variable. So append variable is, uh, is the activity that can uh, take value and keep appending to it. It's an array. So if uh, you are going to go back here, let's say there was no values, right? So first time it read the file, file name one, then uh, file name two, 
and file name three and all that so you can keep uh, appending the values to this uh, variable and this is only for array type so this is not a string type so this is just to remember that the append activity append variable activity is going to work with the only array type of variables okay so that's enough for the append variable so let's go back and see the logic apps that's ready so what we have to do once we click on the logic apps it's going to open logic app designer I'm going to go and uh, add a new so now it open uh, the designer and here let it uh, first uh, search this thing now type request so what's going to happen uh, we are going to send uh, a request and uh, that's uh, uh, when HTTP request is received once uh, the HTTP request is received this part is going to run now you see that uh, we can build a payload that's going to be used so we are going to pass the payload from our uh, Azure Data Factory pipeline to our um, logic apps okay so here I'm going to click use the sample payload to generate schema and here I'm going to go parentheses and I'm going to say list of files and then the second part is going to be colon and I know that I'm going to provide an array of values so see I put the square parentheses right there if I hit OK now you see that it's in a list of files and then it is expecting an array so that's good what's going to happen next we are going to use a method click on the side and it will show you which method post put or whatever so in my case I'm going to post now what's going to happen I need to send once I get this list I need to send so I'm going to go click add new and I'm going to use a gmail this time so I type gmail and uh, gmail right there and what you want to do send email okay so this guy right there now in the gmail is asking you hey connection name so I'm going to say tech brothers it gmail so whatever the name you want to give up in the authentication it's going to ask you use a, a default shared application bring your own application I'm going to go use the default shared and sign in it's going to ask me my username and password so I'm going to provide that so it uh, is uh, giving me my different uh, accounts and I'm going to use this uh, account now it is asking me do you allow that yes I do okay so the email part has been added now uh, here so it is asking you to the list of the valid email so I'm going to send to myself amir sql age at gmail.com and now it is asking you would like to add different parameters yes why not so in this case I'm gonna add a subject and then I'm gonna add a body and let's click on the side so first of all I will say uh, in the subject list of files which are waiting for processing so you can use all different type of parameters and dynamic contents and everything but I'm hard coding so in the body what I'm gonna do I am going to say hi below is the list of files which need needs to be processed okay so as I was explaining to you you can have tons of things such as maybe you want to get a list and send an email for the files which are waiting or you may maybe have processed them and then after that you want to send the email so uh, write the email the way you want in here I need to provide that uh, list of those files so that is going to come from right here so click uh, see more and if you remember that uh, list of the files that's a payload we uh, generated on top and we have that right there list of files okay and I can hit enter and here I say thank you tech brothers IT LLC whatever so you wanna write them so right there so this part is ready save it now once you save it uh, and click on uh, HTTP request uh, this uh, URL will be created uh, copy this guy and now we go back to our Azure Data Factory and here we are going to bring the web activity 
now what we are going to do we are going to bring uh, a web activity and uh, what we will do with the web activity we are going to use the url that we have created in the logic apps uh, connect our set variable to the web activity and uh, here i'm going to go back to the uh, this uh, logic apps copy the url and let's go back to the azure data factory here go to web and go to settings provide the url here and then go to the API method it's going to be post and now we have to write our body click on add dynamic content so here put the parentheses and the starting and ending and now we have to create a, so list of files right that's what we are passing second part what we need to pass is the array of those files and we have saved that into the string list of files variable so I'm gonna click right there and this comes totally right there but it shouldn't be here so we are gonna do at the rate here and then put curly parentheses around this guy okay so what we are doing here list of the files and then we are passing an array of the files here we are gonna hit okay now we are going to save and publish and uh, then uh, after that we should be executing our pipeline. Let's uh, hit debug and now our pipeline is going to execute. So it got the list of the files by using uh, get metadata activity and now it looped through each of the files and then there is a wait activity that's really we have put in for nothing and then uh, it has uh, append variable so it appended all the file names to the array type variable that's our list of the files after that it set the value to this variable so to the string uh, list of files and that we have used in the web activity so if you go right there click right there on the blank area go to the output and here if we go to the input uh, so this is uh, the body has created them um, so this is uh, the body that will be passed and uh, now if you go to the web activity you are going to see some information there so this looks good and uh, now we are going to close it it got completed i'm going to go back to my email and i'm going to refresh you once i refresh you i should have an email right there so list of files which are waiting for processing that's my subject and then we click right there and you see that uh, please uh, this is a list of the fi files which need to be processed and then you have the list of the files see this is the first file then another file and another and another and another so these are different files so you can see the day from the date timestamp you can see that and then I have my hard code values thank you and tech brother LLC so this is how you will be using append variable in Azure data factory so there could be a lot of other scenarios so in this case what we did we got the list of the files from the blob then we use the for each loop to loop through those list of the files and saved into the array type variable list of the files that's our variable and then once we had it we use another activity set variable and set the value to the string type variable this is how you will convert uh, an array to the string so see right there you put the parent have a uh, this curly parentheses around it so i wanted to convert the entire array value of this variable to the string so this is how i saved in the string variable once i have that i use the web activity and uh, why we use it because uh, we use the logic app so and we need to send the http request so that's what we use the web activity and then uh, we build our uh, body here for our list of the files and uh, that, that created uh, the list of the files for our email um, so i hope uh, you learned something out of this uh, thank you very much uh, what i will do i will put these a uh, couple of expressions what i use here in the body uh, or you can always you know copy and paste and use it in your case and uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.